In this lab, we'll design active and passive RC circuits to provide a desired time constant. We'll then measure the time constant to ensure that the design requirements are met. Finally, we'll investigate the effects of adding a load to the circuits. In the step response of an RC circuit, we suddenly increase the voltage across a combination of a capacitor and a resistor from zero to some constant value. This is a conceptual circuit that performs this process. A constant source with voltage A is connected to the RC circuit with a switch. When the switch moves, the voltage across the RC circuit increases instantly from zero volts to A volts. When we move the switch in this circuit, the capacitor voltage increases as shown here. The time constant of the circuit is the amount of time required for the capacitor voltage to reach 63% of its final value. This is the circuit we'll be implementing in the lab. Channel 1 of the waveform generator will be used to apply the step input voltage to the RC circuit. We can emulate a step input by applying a square wave with amplitude A over 2 and offset A over 2. That means that the average value of the waveform is 1 half of A, the minimum value will be 0, and the maximum value will be A. The step response will be the circuit's response to this increasing edge of the square wave. Now let's wire up the circuit and measure its response. Here's my passive RC circuit. This is my resistor. This is my capacitor. I'm using channel 1 of the waveform generator to provide the square wave to the circuit. Ground is here. Channel 1 of the oscilloscope, the orange wire and the orange wire with the white stripe are measuring the input. And channel 2, the blue wire and the blue wire with the white stripe is measuring the output, which is the voltage across the capacitor. We're using the waveform generator to apply our square wave. The frequency is 20 hertz. The amplitude is 1 volt and the offset is 1 volt. So we have a signal with a period of 50 milliseconds, which goes from 0 volts to 2 volts. Click on Run to provide power. Now let's open up the scope. I'm triggering off of a 1 volt level using the rising edge of channel 1. I've set my time base to 10 milliseconds per division. And the scales on channel 1 and channel 2 are both a half of a volt per division. The orange wire is my input square wave. The blue wire is my response. I want to measure the time constant, which is the point where the blue wave gets to 63% of its final value. 63% of 2 is about 1.26. I'll use my cursors to find that value. OK, that's about 1.26 volts here. I can measure an elapsed time with my horizontal cursors. That's my zero time. And this. is the time when the waveform gets to 1.27 volts. The elapsed time is 4.7 milliseconds, which is fairly close to the target 5 milliseconds. You can expect a fair amount of variation in the capacitor's capacitances, which can explain differences in this from the design value. Often, our circuits will need to be interconnected with other circuits to perform some overall task. Adding these other circuits can cause what are called loading effects on our circuit. We'll investigate these loading effects by connecting a resistor, R sub L, across the capacitor in our previous circuit. Addition of this resistor, of course, changes the equivalent resistance seen by the capacitor, which will change the time constant of the circuit. It'll also change the final voltage, or the steady state response, seen by the capacitor. If we've designed our original circuit to provide some desired time constant and final value, adding this load can cause the overall circuit to not behave as we desire. Now let's add the resistor to our earlier circuit and see the change in response. 
Now let's add our resistor by plugging it in across the terminals of the capacitor. The steady state response and the time constant have both changed significantly. We can alleviate loading effects by using an active circuit. This is one example of a first order active RC circuit. The time constant of this circuit is equal to R2 times C. So we can choose R2 and C to provide the same time constant as our previous circuit. The DC gain for this circuit is 2, so the steady state output voltage will be twice the value of the input step function. However, if we load this circuit with the same resistor we used in our previous example, our measured response won't change significantly. The op amp isolates the load from the circuit. So if we use this circuit to provide power to the load, we don't have to account for the load when we design our circuit to give us a desired time constant and final voltage. Now let's implement this circuit and look at the loading effects. Here's our active first order circuit. I'm using an OP27 operational amplifier. The positive power supply is V plus, that's the red wire. The negative power supply is V minus, the white wire. Ground is over here. I've spread out ground with this jumper cable down here. This resistor and this resistor are my resistors R1. This is the resistor R2, and this is the capacitor C. My input is provided with channel 1 of the waveform generator, this yellow wire. I'm using channel 1 of the oscilloscope, the orange wire, and the orange wire with the white stripe to measure the input. I'm using channel 2 of the oscilloscope, the blue wire, and the blue wire with the white stripe to measure the output. Now let's apply power and make our measurements. I'll use the supply instruments to set the positive and negative external supplies to positive 5 volts and negative 5 volts respectively. Now I'll apply my square wave with the waveform generator. I'm using a 20 hertz wave. The amplitude is one half of a volt and the offset is a half a volt. Click on Run to start providing power to the circuit. Now let's go to the scope. There's our response. The input voltage is the yellow line. The output voltage is the blue line. I'll use my cursors to measure the time constant. The output goes from 0 to 2 volts. 63% of 2 volts is 1.26 volts. I'll use a Y cursor to find 1.26 volts. And then I'll use my X cursors to measure the time elapsed from when the step function is applied to the time when we reach 0.63 times the final value. The time elapsed is about 4.7 milliseconds. Now let's plug in our load resistor. If we apply a load to this, the measured response doesn't change at all. An important part of this lab was to examine the effects of loading the circuit. Electrical circuits are commonly used to apply voltages to other systems. The system to which they're connected can have a strong effect on the original circuit's behavior. Active circuits are generally less susceptible to loading effects. 